One of the best feelings ever, my completed shelf has reached its physical capacity. There's 35 books on it that I've read cover to cover. This isn't a ranking, but I am going to save my favorite for last. Let's get into it. First off, we both laughed in pleasure, selected diaries of Lou Sullivan. This feature is the kind of honesty that only comes from a dead person. It's really intense and intimate to grow up with Lou Sullivan from the age of 10 and you can't help but get attached to him. I love his obsession with Lou Reed and the Beatles. The 70s San Francisco era is something I've read from a lot of different perspectives, but this one is great because he feels just as excited to be there as I am to be reading about it. Next, Ball Four. This is my favorite sports book. Jim Bouton has such a strong voice and point of view. He's really funny and really opinionated. There's still a lot to learn from this book about workers' rights and sports, and I love how much he's trying to peel back the curtain about the stinginess and ridiculousness of employers. This is a must read for anyone with a slight interest in major league sports. King Kong on 4th Street, Families and the Violence of Poverty on the Lower East Side by Hagna Wajiska Sharf. This is an ethnographic study of Puerto Rican families living on the Lower East Side of Manhattan that follows the trajectory of mainly children's lives from 1974 to 1990. Scharf expertly bridges this gap between reporting on the world she sees and the lives developing in front of her and the systemic analysis of the forces at play. Now it's time for some hockey books, and the best one by far is The Game by Ken Dryden. Ken Dryden is so smart, introspective about the game and his role in it. One thing that really stuck with me was his description of the locker room and the noise of that environment. The level of noise is something he alludes to throughout the book to indicate the mood of the team. He's such a good observer as an insider with a huge amount of perspective and understanding. The Rookie by Shauna Richer follows Sidney Crosby's day-to-day -day rookie season in the NHL. It has some good anecdotes, and it gives you a lot of appreciation for what he overcame to deliver 102 points that season. But it's basically just an archive of rinkside reporting. It doesn't go very deep, so it wasn't that enjoyable for that reason. The Game of Our Lives by Peter Zowski. Richard cites this in the Crosby book a lot, so I picked it up after I read that. It follows Gretzky's rookie year on the 1980-1981 Edmonton Oilers, but the scope is much bigger than in the Crosby book. It's sentimental about hockey. Zowski uses this book to reflect on the game as a whole. It's a great pick for a dad or an uncle that you think should read a book. Logical Family is Armistead Maupin's life story. Lots of good context for fans of Tales of the City. Sempre Susan by Sigrid Nunez is a really loving portrait of a narcissist you get a very clear picture of Sontag as this intense, dramatic genius. You don't need to be familiar with Sontag's work, but it's really interesting to compare the outside view of her here versus what she puts out in her essays. I came out with a lot of respect and intrigue about her mind, but I would be terrified to meet her. When You Are Engulfed in Flames and Naked by David Sedaris. I'm a huge fan of David Sedaris, and these are just the ones I happen to own. I prefer his more recent releases. I think Happy Go Lucky and Calypso are really the best, but these are entirely up to standard. When You Are Engulfed in Flames is probably the better of the two. It finishes out with a long story called The Smoking Section about quitting smoking, and Sedaris exhibits his unique ability to zoom in on the desperation of addiction. Stranger Than Fiction by Chuck Palahniuk is just okay. I really like the punchline to the Navy story. Then we have Fight Club for Masks and Fight Club for Femmes. I read Invisible Monsters for the first time in seventh grade, and it was perfect for me then. Polanuk writes to be highlighted and scribbled in angry text. Fight Club I only read last year at the age of 22. It's a little harder to get on board with this type of angsty lyrical writing that literally inspired a Panic at the Disco song these days. But Tyler Durden sells it so well. I wouldn't change anything about how either of these books are written, but you really have to give yourself over to the drama. I think the societal commentary in Invisible Monsters is super relevant today, whereas I have a harder time sympathizing with the Fight Club ethos because complaining about a full-time office job rings pretty hollow in today's gig economy. Still, I end up reading a lot about this 90s era. The theme for this category is a look into my middle school psychology, it's also 90s nightlife. Party Monster was a pivotal film for me, and the book is a must if you're interested in the real life events. James St. James is also a really fun and expressive writer who isn't afraid of all caps. I Am Not Myself These Days is an intense personal drama, and you really get caught up in the life of the author Josh Kilmer Purcell. 
I still mourn the relationship featured here as if it were my own. The last lines break me down just to think about. Clubland, The Fabulous Rise and Murderous Fall of Club Culture by Frank Owen is an excellent autopsy on the forces that shaped everything that we're looking at in all of these other books. There's more information on Michael Alleg and the Club Kids, but also the history of techno and raves in the city, and a lot of mob shit. It's crazy to see how it's all connected. Finally, James St. James's follow-up book, Freak Show, is a pretty cute high school romance inspired by his youth in Florida and written in his signature style. Speaking of romance, Here's more gay romance. Check Please by Ngozi Uzaku is an all-time great for fictional worlds you want to live in. I read this in college and wish this was the experience I was having at the time. If you like Yuri on Ice, you'll like this. The entire comic is free at checkpleasecomic.com. The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Everyone knows about this book. I can't tell you anything new. You're sleeping if you haven't gotten to it. It's Achilles and Patroclus, and their love is cosmic and eternal. Half-Life by Aaron Cratch. There's a lot going on in this book. You kind of don't know where it's headed, and then it's over, and you've had sex with a cop. It leaves a lot unresolved, but I like hanging out with Adam and his friends. Recursion by Blake Crouch. This is the straight romance category, as well as sci-fi. Neither of those are really my specialty, but this was still so good. It felt so urgent, and it was hard to put down. I love the imagery of the oil rig in the middle of the ocean, with the waves crashing all around, as well as the base on Antarctica. Spoilers, but to me the climax of the book was when she kept going back to her 16-year-old self and living her life again and again. This book makes you imagine a lot of really hard things, and Crouch has a firm hand on the visceral. The category is B, Brett Easton Ellis. American Psycho is my favorite book that isn't enjoyable to read. It's definitely an intentional slog, but I came out of it with so much appreciation for the artistic experience. And there are really funny scenes throughout that make it worth it. The movie is faithful, but the book is so much more in every way. Day in and out with Bateman watching the Patty Winters show, returning videotapes, having homophobic thoughts, and being on the brink of tears and hyperventilation constantly is just unparalleled. I read Less Than Zero after American Psycho, and for me it really didn't hold a candle. I think part of it is that these books highlight the difference between being age 18 and 26, and I am on the older end of that spectrum. I think I would have liked Less Than Zero a lot as a teen. I still want to read more Brad Easton Ellis. I'm thinking about Glamorama and The Shards next. The Nick Adams Stories Collection by Hemingway. I loved being in the dense forest, fishing, cooking over campfire with Nick, wrapping food in wax paper and putting it in your pocket, Hell yes. The Three Day Blow is definitely the standout story for me here. This is the first long form Hemingway I've really read and I want to tackle a novel but I'm having a hard time choosing so please comment any recommendations. The Stranger I had as a signed reading in both high school and college and I should probably hit it again soon. Animal Farm is a great parable. It's more relevant of a critique than 1984 I think and it's really sad when you just read it for plot. It's kind of really sad either way. The Jungle is also very sad when you just read it for plot. I think the narrative is overshadowed a lot of the time, and I felt pretty close to the characters. It's like a dystopian epic. All the bad things that could possibly happen to Yorgos do, and it's so easy to see how one leads to another, and it always comes back to this extremely corrupt capitalist system that he's living under. The Vintage Book of Contemporary American Short Stories. This ruined me for every other short story collection I've read since. It's all hits, no skips. My favorite stories are Moonwalk by Susan Power, which is just beautiful. Testimony of a Pilot by Barry Hanna, which is so fleshed out. It keeps you wondering, and the quote, I am a dragon, America the beautiful, like you will never know, is one of those quotes that just sticks. Minor Heroism by Alan Gerganis hits all the right notes. There's also a story called Aunt Granny Lithe that's featured both in that Vintage Contemporaries collection and in Kentucky Straight by Chris Offit, which is a collection of just his work, an anthology of stories set in a very mystical part of the Appalachian Mountains. The next category are books that are kind of mid. Gray by Pete Wentz I never would have read if it didn't come out at the peak of my fallout boy fandom junkie by william s burroughs it has some good visceral descriptions 
but not a lot else that spoke to me. Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas by Hunter S. Thompson is a better drug book. It feels like the acid trip that just keeps going that it's trying to convey, but it's still possible to keep up with. It's a great balance of action and themes. The Book Thief. This was assigned reading for me in 8th grade. Do you think it ever stopped any kids from becoming Nazis? I have a signed copy because I went to a reading event with the author. It was the first time I heard an Australian accent in real life. The Exorcist, I would recommend to any fan of the movie. It has more scenes, it's heavier on its themes, and every time I'm cold indoors, I think about how Blatty describes Reagan's bedroom. Finally, number one, it's in cold blood. The Clutter family, the investigators, the townspeople, Dick and Perry, what more can I say? Orville Peck feels the same way I do. I love this vintage signet copy that I have, even though it's taped up. Reading this book is an experience I've been trying to get back ever since, which is why I'm currently reading Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil by John Berent. I'm only about 100 pages in, but I love Savannah, Georgia, and I'm feeling right at home there. Let me know in the comments what you think about any of these books. Thanks for listening.